Welcome to the Art of Happy Her. I am your host, Sandy. And if this is your first time listening, thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Please listen with an open heart. And I hope that you return. If this is not your first time, welcome tribe. And as you know, we always have an intention or journal prompt. And we always talk about zodiac, astrological birth charts, and cultural background. Just so we can have a little picture, a mental picture of... um of kind of who we talking to and we always ask the question when are we or when are you the highest self however today we're not gonna have a journal prompt because if you listen to the couple of episodes before this one we already have a journal prompt for um, this uh, vast astrology um, topic so we won't do that today because we're going to continue on on what, where we left off on episode 12. Uh, but before we do that, I want to um, review a certain little things. And I'm not going to say again about the ascending and descendant because I don't want to oversaturate with the same thing, even though I know I tend to do that. Um, this time I just want to... Um, let you know that I've I've used a couple of books and I've also watched the History Channel. Believe it or not, the History Channel. If you look it up and you look up um, uh, astrology, it actually just just like it talks about all of this and um, where it came from, how it started, how it migrated to other parts of, um, you know, before Christ, um, into the Ma- Ma- the Mayan world, um, los Incas y los Mayas, and how it went to Greek, and how it was used in Judaism and Christianity. Um, it just really goes there, because astrology was the first science, and long before other sciences came along, astrology was used to explore the relationship between the position of Earth and the position of these bodies in the heavens in ancient times. Astrology and astronomy were one science, and astrologers were the best educated people, and they had to understand um, astronomy, math, spiritual symbols and mystic meaning psychology psychology and human nature um it shouldn't come as a surprise then that astrology was taught in the universities until the 1600s um it was um until uh, rational science took over that today astrologers are still very well um, educated and often hold college degrees in various fields, like moi. Um, they frequently have training in psychology, like moi, or counseling. And in addition to their in-depth knowledge of astrology, they have a great deal of spiritual understanding, like moi. <laughs> um, when we talk about uh, the signs and their associated parts of the body. I wanted to touch on that because I mentioned, um, I already did the springs, the signs of the spring and the signs of the summer. Um, so before we go into the fall and the winter, I, I want to elaborate or clarify what the signs and their associated body parts are. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to just go quickly through this because it's a lot. Um, each astrological sign has an associated body part and it starts from the top of your head, which is Aries. And, um, it's associated, it's associated with a particular body part and it ends with Pisces with the feet. Um, Aries is head and face. Taurus is neck and throat. Gemini is head arms, shoulders, the nervous system, and lungs. Cancer is stomach and breast. Leo is the back, spine, and heart. Virgo is intestines, liver, pancreas, gallbladder, and bowels. Libra is kidneys, 
lower back and adrenal glands. Scorpio is the genitals and the urinary and reproductive organs. Sag is Sagittarius is liver, hip, and thighs. Capricorn is bones, teeth, joints, and knees. Aquarius is ankles and circulation. And Pisces is the feet and the immune and hormonal systems. For example, Capricorn represents the bones, the joints, the knees, the teeth. So naturally, a lot of protein and calcium are going to be useful if you were born under this sun sign. So that's why those things are important when I mention them. And back to um, astrology and um, being very important. Um, astrologers analyze the position of the planets at the time and place you were born to map not only your strength and challenges, but your soul's purpose as well. So when you get to know these things, you get to connect with your authentic self and you follow because you know that's your purpose. Not to say that you don't have free will to change things around, which is also part of astrology. When you know these things, you have agency and you can change things. Um, I just want to share with you certain things that I think they're super cool. The Dalai Lama is a Pisces and um, Pisces, the vocation of a Pisces is compassion, universality, and inclusiveness. But he also has Virgo in, um, in his chart and that reveals the foundation in the role of sacred service to others. And of course, this will be true for the incarnation of the Buddha of compassion, right? The Dalai Lama, who I was looking at his chart, and he his rising is Cancer, and his moon is Cancer. And, and that's, like, he is what he is. He is what you see, period. Um, that's just something for you to know. And um, the, for example, Pisces, uh, the archetype for Pisces is Christ. If you see ever um, any images, even in the church, you'll see that there's fishes. When you see, um, when they, when they, when any religion talks about, not any, when religion talk about or draw, um, Christ, Jesus Christ, because he is the perfect archetype of Pisces. And just so you know, when when he was born, the three the three um magi, magi los tres magos, los tres reyes magos, they were not only priests, they were priests trained in astrology and other sacred knowledge. They studied the stars and the weather and they just knew about everything and all the, about the Milky Way, the sunrise, the sunset, the moon, and all its faces. And when they were looking for uh, the Christ, they, what did I write? Hold on. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. Hold on, because I'm trying to organize my thoughts. They, um, they knew they were wise men because they were looking over the stars of Beth Bethlehem. Um, and um, it's believed that they, they knew that the Christ was coming because of the conjunction of planets. And it was the, the age of Pisces. So he was like the perfect archetype of Pisces, right? Um, self, um, what do you say that? A sacrifice for the world. Um, this wasn't quite as easy as it sounds because that time when Jupiter and Saturn, um, were the brightest star, the brightest star in the sky, they were, con they, it was a conjunction of those two planets that led the three magician, 
mag how do you say that? Como se dice? The three uh, wise men um, to find Jesus. And I want to share something because I was looking into all of that and I think this is important. When this happened, when the conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter happened, Jesus Christ was born and it was a big, major changer in the world, right? Whether you are Jew, uh, 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 practice Judaism or atheist or whatever, it still changed the world, right? Whether you believe him or not, it does not matter. The thing is that we know about it, right? Until this day. And um, the times were marked before him and after, right? So that was uh, an important thing that happened in the world. The next time that happened, that these two planets were in conjunction, Jupiter and Saturn, was on December 21st, 2020. So think about that. Um, what happened in 2020 in December that marked the world? that changed the world forever and it's going to stay in the record forever. Think about that. So um, a little bit of the astrolingo conjunction. A conjunction of planets means that the two planets appear in the same place in the sky at the same time. Conjunctions uh, begin new cycles that reflect the planets involved. So... If you look up Jupiter and if you look up Saturn, those two planets mean something, right? Um, evolve something. So, and we're, we're going to look into that because that's a lot. We're going to come back to that but we are going to continue where we left off in the last episode and episode 12, because I'm going tangent on, <laughs> I'm going left field now. I'm going way off. Um, so I'm going to go for um, just moving forward and uh, season one, episode 13 must continue because it's long and it's the fall signs guys we're going to talk about libra scorpio and sag libra is the scales um a fine balance scorpio is intense power and sag is the archer flying high the archer right like an arch and a bow and, and an arch um with the start of fall, you have these are my notes. Um, with the start of fall, we we move from the signs of personal development into the signs of external development. Libra, the seeker of harmony, Scorpio, the transformer, and Sag is the explorer. These are the signs that begin to integrate self and family with community. In the fall, the desire is to connect to others. And this season is the season of cooperation. Fall is just like spring. It's a season of transition. Nature begins to retreat itself in preparation for winter. So it leaves colors and, and turns colors of the leaves and and um, of the branches and it goes into harvest um, to reinforce with nutrients and external environment appears poised to turn inward this is the time to go inside and really really look in because the fall signs they push you to do that um, we're going to start with Libra. Libra is an air sign, cardinal, starts things. Yang is the energy and the ruler is Venus and the color is blue and the gem is opal. The anatomy associated with Libra is kidneys, lower back, and adrenal glands. The 
what determines your if your Libra is September 22 to October 23. Uh, the symbol for Libra is a scale. You might see it everywhere, even in the justice system. And let's go for the light bulb. How many Libras does it take to screw in a light bulb? Maybe one, do it, or maybe not. Maybe they one does it, or maybe two do, does it. We're not sure. Maybe one, maybe not. <laughs> Har because harmony and balance is so important to them. No one wants to even um, even things out more than a Libra. Libra begins at the um, equinox, you know, at the autumn equinox. And um, it's a time when we have to balance. And um, it's a time where the day equals the length of the night. And scales strive for such balance in all they do. Libras know the that although time and place for doing things are important, they also like to cooperate with anything that's outside of themselves because they appreciate equilibrium, stability, and connect heart and mind to achieve unity and peace. They are non-confrontational. They are very fair. It takes a lot for a Libra to confront you, but when they do, is not good. <laughs> Think Will Smith. <laughs> Libras are charming and their charm is primarily due to the rulership the rulership in Venus. I haven't spoken about all the rulership and some other signs before this because that's a whole episode. So that's why I haven't really elaborated on that, but okay. I I just did that. So Libras are charming. Um they appreciate the art and the beauty. They love beautiful things around them. They they might not even be artists. They might not draw. They might not be poets. They might not, um, but they are art collectors. They're art collectors. They like to be around it and they like to, um, they like their partners to be creative. Um, they thrive on that. Um, they are diplomatic and especially with friendships. Um, like other cardinal signs, Libra seems um, to like motion, moving around, and enjoying life. Libra is an air sign as well. And like all air signs, they have an active mind. And sometimes that can take them away from, if you don't know yourself, if you're a Libra and you don't really know yourself, that can take away from you because an air sign might be thinking about other things and not focus on, on what it is that they really want. Um, <clears throat> famous people that are Libra, Will Smith, John Lennon, Eleanor Roosevelt, Matt Dame, Matt Damon, Nicole Kidman, and one of my best friends. Um, well, two, and my mom. I shouldn't be saying all this because you know what? Um, I haven't mentioned all the family members on the other signs, so I shouldn't say this. Um, so that way nobody feels that I'm putting their stuff out there. Um, the best and worst of scales. Scales are social creatures. They're ready to share their experience with others and quick to form partnerships. They love, love. Friendly, they're popular and attractive. They're charming. They often are idealistic as well. They're eager to talk about their high principles and lofty ideas with anyone who will listen. But scales can seem affected or insincere. They can seem a little insincere because they're too eager to compromise their decisions for others. Scales are often so busy weighing each side 
of an issue that they can never come up to a conclusion or a decision. Also, in their need to please others, they might forget to please themselves. Scales need to be aware of their own needs and meet them and meet them too, not just those of other people. At their best, scales understand that their strength lies in creating and maintaining relationships. Scales seek to find their perfect complement, their other half, to complete the balance. They also want to find balance in other things, not just relationships. The goal for a Libra is to attain of inner harmony and reconciliation of the opposites, which is not an easy task. But if someone can do it, a Libra can. The prime purpose of scales is to create relationship with others. Libra is the opposite of Aries, where people are concerned with themselves. Here we see the concerns for others and the incorporation of both perspective between mine and theirs. So Libra has a scale and there's mine and theirs and the opposite of Libra is Aries. Um... And because it's the opposite, opposites attract. Scales love, they love to be loved and admired. If they don't feel desired, they're just not happy. But who would, right? I like to be desired too. And they give much in return. They really do. They constantly testing their powers of attraction. They're flirts, actually. Even if, and most of the Libras that I know, they're highly flirtatious, and they don't take things to the next level. They really don't. They're just flirtatious. That's that's how they are. They seem flirtatious. Oh, I wrote it. Flirtatious and flighty, but all the while, scales are seeking for their other half. Scales are romantics. They love to set the mood for romance by creating an atmosphere of beauty to match their feelings. Um, <clears throat> they match with air signs like Gemini, Aquarius, and other Libras um, with their easy talk and quick minds and are obvious match for scales, but they are interested interested in possibilities so they like the opposite which is Aries though each sign might believe the other is too selfish Aries thinks that Libra is too selfish and 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 Libra thinks that Aries is too selfish um so that can be you know a little conflicts but when you know it then you know how to work with it that's why people this is why I love knowing these things. So that way you can work on it. And by working on it means either self-improvement um, books or um, learning about your mate or considering your mate or going to therapy. That's what I mean by that. Skills are their strongest with other people, yet their focus in a relationship is on themselves. Scales self-concept is reflective one uh, they see themselves through other people's eyes rather than their own at the same time scales might hide their own feelings in order to give an appearance of balance scales do well to remember that making a decision is not always tipping of the scales so let's talk about a healthy scale Healthy scales should pay attention to inner fitness as well as outer fitness. Their tendency towards lower back or kidney problems is a direct result of keeping things inside to avoid creating discomfort. They don't like to fight. They don't like confrontation. So they hold things in for a long time. And then that affects their kidneys. That affects their uh, lower back. Most of the times you see that they have pain on their back and that's from all the stuff that are held in. This is why therapy is important. <laughs> As in love, healthy 
scales need to bring their ideals down to an earthly scale. Scales also can benefit from holistic aids like aromatherapy and the lovely scents and property of, of oils and candles because after all, Venus is all about smells and uh, beauty and um, sensuality. So these things are very helpful for a Libra. Scales homes are lovely places and they're filled with art and filled with reflections of beauty because Venus is their planet. True to their need for others, scales are among the great hosts of the Zodiac. They love to host you when you come over. They won't invite you, but when you're over, they make you feel at home. They fill their homes with other people as well as those people's conversation, ideas, and often their music. Um, scales also enjoy the comforts of life and will not hesitate to make certain that their home reflects them. Because scales seek harmony and balance above all, this is what you will find in their homes. Still, all the waffling that I mentioned with the scales, um, the constant thinking and the constant decision decision difficulty like making decisions is very difficult because they they just have like an idea of of what harmony can mean um they have a hard time thinking about or making a decision because um usually when you when you talk to uh, a Libra, they will tell you, let me think about it. Let me think about it. Because this is how, how they operate. It's not easy to just come up with a decision, even like a simple decision of what are we going to eat. And I'll leave that at that. <laughs> um. And it's hard for them to say no. That's another thing. It's really difficult for them to say no. Um, signs ruled by Venus are the most romantic of the zodiac signs. Um, just letting you know, Taurus and Venus. Um, Taurus and Libra are those two signs. Um, but this same romanticism can translate to a search for an ideal mate as well. So be careful, guys. Um you know, sometimes we have high expectations of of another person because we're so in love with love, and we put them on a pedestal, and then um and then we get disappointed. Um, social Libras shine at work. Uh, they are often leaders, and um, they like to show off uh their work. Uh, and they usually show others how to do it. Uh, their need for balance and harmony is very well put out at work because they often are partners instead of like leaders on their own. I'm just going to give you an example. Like they're leaders, but they are like, um, you know, partnership leadership. Like they are probably co-owners, um, vice president or principals or like they, they like the other half. They like the other balance, right? Um, they achieve great um, things with another person. Uh, scales, charms comes into play at work too. They may have a knack for public relations or sales. Or scales love of beauty might translate into a career in the arts or in fashion or interior design. So if you are a Libra, look and see what you used to like as a child. You like moving things and decorating and painting. Maybe that was the career that um, was of your purpose. Um, 
or maybe you you liked fashion or you always were an innovator when it came to fashion a trendsetter um you can you can see that now right like it, the career translates into that you might expect scales to be judges and lawyers but though although they often are found in these fields their tendency to to think about decisions so much they're not in that field they're not a judge they're not they're not judges and they're not lawyers because it takes them a while to make a decision so you might find them but they're not they're really not <laughs> um they tend to be good at counselors where their ability to hear two sides of an issue rather than take sides um they they they're good for that and for the same reason they can be remarkable teachers um translating a broad array of ideas into a range of possibilities um money for scales is a means to an end and that end is beauty and harmony scales need to be aware however that things and their appearances cannot give or replace inner security and harmony and they might find that hanging on to a little mad money could bring them much closer to such balance than they would have thought possible scales are often likely to invest in things and people than in long-term securities because they like to see an immediate return on their investment in form of beauty and harmony. The inward reflects the outward here as in no other sign. To scales, appearances do really matter. Okay. So... We're going to move on to Scorpio, which is one of my favorite signs. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> because that's a, a me. <laughs> that's why. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, let's start with the light bulb. Uh, no, Scorpio is uh, intense power. That's what it's associated with. And... Um, and I said Libras is a fine balance, right? Fine balance. Scorpio is intense power. And um, how many Scorpios does it take to screw in a light bulb? Ready? None. They like the dark. Scorpios are intense. They're dealing, after all, with life and death. And by extension, with birth and sex. Scorpios are all about mystery, about how that poison stinger can so quickly, so quickly change your life into death. And Scorpios can be both penetrating and incisive. Scorpio is one of the signs that has two rulers, Pluto, Pluto and Mars. Remember when I told you on the first not the first, on episode 11, when we first started talking about the archetype, that Aries has two uh, rulers, so does Scorpio. And we share the same, actually. <clears throat> um, that's why this sign can be quite a warrior and very powerful. Combined with their fixed nature, these people never give up. The symbol for Scorpio is just like Virgo, like an M, but without the crossing on the little leg, it's just an M like, or the little scorpion that you see. Like all water signs, Scorpios are more concerned with feelings than appearances. And as a fixed sign, they're often resistant to change, like Taurus. Scorpios' ability to see through others, facades, facades can serve them well. And, um, They can wait forever for the right moment to even to get even or make their move, but they never give up. Scorpios uh, persevere, uh, persevere until they attain an outcome that is their truth. 
So if they have a perception of something or someone, even if it takes a lifetime, they know that what they know is the truth. And that's because they're fixed. And we'll talk about the um we'll talk about the qualities later on. Also fixed, mutable, and all the cardinal. We'll talk about that later on. That's a whole episode, but just know that. So I'm gonna give you a, a, a fact. So according to the Navajo, um the native the native myth. Um, grandmothers, there's a, a grandmother spider and that grandmother spider of all people, um, whenever the people seem lost or confused, it is the grandmother spider who speaks to them for her, um, ever evolving web to remind them that they already know the way and that they must simply look inside themselves. The mother, grandmother spider in the Nava in the Navajo myth is a Scorpio. Scorpios will look at you straight in the eye and tell you that you have the answer within yourself. They don't they don't wait or look for answers outside of themselves. So they expect or they guide you to find that. Scorpios are constantly probing beneath the obvious face of things, seeking what lies beneath. One of their rulers is Pluto. And um, Pluto is the beginning and the end, likes, loves the ends of stuff. So yeah, Scorpios tend to keep ideas and thoughts close to the vest, taking time to absorb and to formulate power plans and actions when needed. Scorpios are intense and probing might make them sound humorless and frightening. I'm not like that, just saying. But these same characteristics create both passion and excitement as well. You might feel as if a Scorpio is looking right through you, but the feeling might be um, invisible for the Scorpio. There just are that way. And then you talk to them and you think that they fucking know you, like they know your life, but that's not true. They don't. They don't even know you. They don't. It just it just feels that way. It's weird. Um, they are the element is water. The quality is fixed. The energy is yin. The rulers are Pluto and Mars. The colors are burgundy and black. Um, I used to love burgundy when I was in high school. I love red now, but. Um, I know I look the best in black, but I stay away from it. I don't know why. I don't want anything black. I don't, I love, I love color, but according to all the research and the astrology, black is the one and I can, I get it because I look the best in black, but I don't wear it. <laughs> it's weird. I don't buy it. I wear it, but I don't, I prefer not to. Like if I, if I see two things up, that's not the one I'm picking. But anyway, enough of that. Um, their gem is topaz, and the anatomy is the genitals, urinary, and reproductive system. Uh, words that describe uh, that you can think of when you think of a Scorpio, think of desire, transformation, and power. Um, famous Scorpios uh, are Pablo Picasso. Leonardo DiCaprio, um, Hillary Clinton, Winona Ryder, thinking Bill Gates. Who else am I thinking? Thinking Drake. I'm thinking um, uh, Future, Sierra, uh, Fab. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's a whole bunch of them, but I'm just giving you an idea of what it kind of looks like, right? Um, 
Scorps use what many astrologers call, call the Scorpionic power to achieve their ends. But maybe we should just look at the power itself because Scorpio is the Zodiac's most powerful sign. What does that mean? Scorpios appear in the Zodiac at the time when Earth seems to be retreating. Leaves fall from the trees, hibernating. Animals seek heaven and haven in their caves. Even humans go inside their homes and sit by their fires. But this retreat is, in reality, a regeneration, a rebirth. And this is true. And this is the source of the scorpion in power. In Scorpio's case, still waters do run deep. In pop astrology, you often find that this power is called sex. And yes, Scorpios do have strongly developed sexuality sometimes. Though they might disguise this even from themselves in which case they may constantly be seeking something they can't quite name. The quest may take them or push others to the edge. Sometimes Scorpios have subliminal energy. Um, they put it in their projects, and at their worst, they may choose to use their magnetism to coerce a um in fanatical ways for example charles manson scorpio is also associated with death but it's in an astrological sense not death like killing someone or killing things or whatever it's more like it refers to transformation and the rebirth than the oblivion um you know Think of the phoenix comes out of the fire. Sometimes that in itself is also detrimental. It's also um, not good for the Scorpio because even though that's their archetype, if you're not aware of that, you tend to look for what makes you, you know, you tend to, go to your trauma and you form trauma bonds with people because you thrive on ending things and starting anew. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm just saying. Um, no other sign of the Zodiac is concerned with cycles of life than uh, Scorpio. Scorpios are magnetic leaders. Um, think, um, Billy Graham, you know, um, they're compassionate, they're brave at their worst, they're manipulative and they're vengeful or even cruel, like, uh, nuclear energy, like Pluto, nuclear energy. Um, they, they can use their power for evil or they can use it for good. Um, energy and power is, uh, the same. You can use it for positive or negative and you can use it for healing or for learning or for controlling. Um, Scorps in love. Um, okay. Although Scorps, Scorpios might know everyone else's heart, they seldom reveal their own. When they do though, they share a depth of compassion like no other sign can. I think that's why a lot of people <clears throat> relate to them when they hear some, when they hear people, oh, you're a Scorpio. Oh, and they like, they get like a little bit, they do like that sound um, because it, they're very much, they hear things about Scorpios, about how they're so cruel or this and that but you can use that 
that power can be used for negative or positive, right? And that's why it's important to know these things so that way you can evolve and work on yourself. Um, like their relatives, uh, like spiders, Scorpios will weave a web of romance, attracting partners with their intricacy and magnetism. But they're also quick to retreat if they feel threatened. And after all, Scorpios have hidden. They have things to reveal. So sometimes you feel like you don't know them, but they know you. You also do well not to like do a lot of things that are not self that bring self awareness to yourself when you're in love with a Scorpio because they have a, a they have a, a good memory and they usually use that for vengeance. Um don't forget that Scorpio is a water sign and sometimes they're emotional. Not sometimes, I can say all the time. Sometimes moody and always slow to commit, but very loyal when they do. Other water signs might be the most comfortable match for Scorpios when it comes to romances, um, but they like clarity that um, Taurus and Virgo can bring and Capricorn. Um, they, they, that's a very good compatibility with them. Um, they also do good with other Scorpios and, um, with the opposite sign, which is Taurus. And because they're very, Taurus is very sensuous and pleasure loving. And, um, so it's an interesting match with Scorpio is very intense. The healthy Scorpio. So reluctant are they to let anyone or anything in but once they do they love you strongly and they share with you um important or they become very vulnerable and they share with you um they are prone to urinary tract infections and constipation because that's the body associated to them, right? Um, the reproductive system and the genitals. Um, but they also have the potential to be great healers, uh, not just of themselves, but also of others because they're strong, rene regenerative, oh, regenerative and transforming powers so good things to know about a Scorpio is that Scorpios pay attention to their dreams because they feel like they're informative and they give them information about their lives uh, so they pay attention to that uh, they eat and drink whatever they eat and drink is, uh, to help them see the bigger picture or feel the bigger picture of their lives. Any relaxation techniques that help a Scorpio get rid of old resentment and anger could also help them feel their best. So for me, I, but well, that's me. I, feel the best um, by following my routines and definitely meditating and doing my yoga because that helps me um, figure out the lesson and get rid of repressed um, anger or resentment. Um, Scorpios need an, an, a, a very good amount of zinc in their diets because they need this for developmental and reproductive organs like the prostate gland and um, the reproductive organs, as well as um, general healing process, which is both very important to a Scorpio. So 
because corps require power and control, life at home can be full of struggles, like power struggles. Or it can be a place where Scorps keep everyone in line until they leave home to start lives of their own. Wow. I wrote that down. I think I did this research, research like back in December. So I don't remember writing this. I, I don't know if I was high. Or something but I don't remember writing this and I'm reading and I'm like wow because as a mom I don't want to be like that so hopefully I am doing the work and I go to therapy and I do all that stuff so that way I'm not like that with my kids but if I am I'm gonna blame it on Scorpio <laughs> I'm not gonna blame it on myself um, but no matter what the kids or spouse do Scorpios are ready to defend them with their lives if necessary because loyalty is very important to them. Well, when Scorpios are unhappy, they head off to be alone and heaven help you if you disturb them. Scorpios usually need to have the need to want a long time to process intense feelings. Without a long time, it can become very hard for a Scorpio to maintain their sense, of, their sense of control. Okay, so for this reason, Scorpios need their own hiding place at home or no one else will bother them. This isn't just a corner or a room of a room either. It's an entire room. It's a whole basement. It's the whole attic. It's a whole room with their own bathroom. If they don't have that, you'll see what happens. <laughs> when Scorps are able to control themselves instead of others, they are very loving. They're loyal and can give a great deal of themselves to their families and mates and their friends. In the workplace, Scorpios thrive on change and career that requires renovation, strategy works very well for them. They might find creative outlets for those transforming energies, or they might be in the healing, into healing arts as doctors, nurses, counselors. Can you hear that? Did I write that or what? I wrote that shit, but I actually researched it. I'm not making this shit up. I'm really not. I'm really not. I'm really not. <laughs> Scorpios can also do very well in fields like research or science. Anything requiring penetrating, probing eye will benefit a Scorpio. Scorpio also are often involved in reviving the environment or cleaning up waste. Scorpios are involved in eliminating toxin, toxins and regeneration, and that's why they excel in these jobs. As the most powerful zodiac sign, so Scorpios also do well in positions in which they can weld that power be in management, financing, or directing. But that power also means that any field Scorpions choose will benefit from their influence, even the seamlessly meaningless job is transformed when a Scorpio is in charge. Okay, so Scorpio and their money. Let's go here. Here again, Scorpio's retentive ways come to the forefront and Scorpio and his money are not soon parted. Scorpios understand the dynamics of power and money and their conservative approach pays off here as well. Scorpios will um, amass cash quietly in their background and then use it to achieve their ends. Outwork. Outward appearances mean little to Scorpios. To them, it's all about control and transformation, and they'll apply their money only where they feel is necessary. I don't know. I have to look into this. 
because I have a funny relationship with money. And that it has nothing to do with my Scorpio sign, obviously. It has to do with my surroundings, how I grew up and what I learned and, um, immig- you know, immig- uh, child of immigrants and all of that. Um, I am working on the relationship I have with money. I, in that sense, I was not, I haven't been too good at that. <laughs> many, um, many of the tw- 20th century's most influential, influential leaders have a rising Scorpio, like Mussolini, Stalin, Gandhi. Um, these are Scorpios uh, because sometimes they, they, they are in quest of power and sometimes they use it for good. Sometimes they use it for evil. Um, it's like, like a Taurus, like, uh, it's like all or nothing, uh, no gray, white or black. Okay. So there you go. Um, let's go to Sag so we can end, uh, the fall, the autumn, the autumn, um, part of the Zodiac. And then we can get into the next episode, which will be with the winter signs. So Sag is the archer. It's, um, the keyword is flying high. It's from November 22 to December 22nd. Excuse me, from 22 to 22, November to December. It's a fire sign. It's mutable. It's yang. And the ruler is Jupiter. The color is purple. The gem is turquoise. The anatomy is liver, hips, and thighs. Uh, keywords to uh, for Sag is understanding, enthusiasm, and exploration. Oh, my God. They love an adventure. <laughs> um, if you if you know a Sag, you know that they get bored easily and they don't mind traveling. They love that. The archer, um, arrows, searches for meaning. Um, the symbol for an archer is an archer. It's the sign with the arch and the little thing, like an arc, you know, an arc. Um, that's a sign. Uh, because this is a yang sign, archers are always moving towards more experience. It's also a party sign. And the party is marked by fire because uh, the, because they're a fire sign, they're high spirited, they are enthusiastic, and a whole lot of fun in a party. They're kind of like, they, they're like quiet and introverted, and then they're in a party and they show you the quite the corn to contrary you're like wow did you have that inside of you it's because they're a fire sign um they're honest they're honest even when they are not telling your truth is their truth and and the way they say it you believe it um because they're direct and their directness is like a, a, a breath of fresh air. When you talk to a Saj and you ask them a question, they're the, they are the people that you should ask them, does these jeans make me look fat? Because they're going to be direct and not hurtful direct. You actually appreciate it. They'll be like, yeah, it makes you look fat. And you're like, oh, okay. You don't even get offended. Like, they're just like that. Archers thrive on independence and freedom. They love freedom. They love freedom. They love freedom. Keep that in mind when it comes to relationships. They never tire of change and and they like to change their scenery. Sure, they might forget your date or miss that important deadline, but you can also count on them to get even the duelist of the parties moving. Archers are ruled by Jupiter, the king of Roman gods and the planet of good fortune and optimism and expansion and abundance. So Jupiter is a fortune teller and archers tend to be freedom-loving, energetic people. 
archer's enthusiasm is bound to be contagious, but their lack of commitment can annoy a lot of responsible signs. Think of Jay-Z and a couple of people that I know in my family. Um, or in my friendship cycles. Their, generos- their generosity might spill into excessiveness. Their optimism, optimism might make them blind to details. And their honesty can make their remarks sound blunt or inconsiderate. So, does that sound a lot to you like another mutable sign like Gemini? Right? So, these are the things that signs have in common. When they are air signs, when they are earth signs, when they are fire signs, when they're cardinal, when they're mutable, this is how things start merging and then they are placed in your in your chart and then things start making sense why you have a lot of similarity with some people and the totally opposite of another and you know and why you are the way that you are and all of that so yeah think of that um and just put it together um they are carefree they are adventurous and they welcome change because they are a mutable sign like pisces Mutable sign, like Gemini. Um, Archers speak their truth whether or not you ask for it. They're candid and outspoken, yet intensely introspective and philosophical. Philosophical. I wrote it and I can't even pronounce it. Mirabe. (sighs) Archers in love. Commitment. Sure. Just don't expect it to go too long. And that's that on that. (laughs) (laughs) Ay, ay, ay. Love is fun. For them, love is fun. Romance is a gas. Passion is excitement. Um, That's how they see it. Those who require loyalty and longevity and love might do well to look elsewhere. But if you're looking for a good time, you can call 1-800-Sagittarius. And I'm not saying this to be silly or funny. It's just saying it because um, they just like a journey. They like a good time. Sounds like Gemini, right? Um, maybe they're a good match, Gemini and Sag. <laughs> Archers aren't just looking for a good time all the time, okay? They just want someone that helps them in the journey. They're here to seek um, and to learn and to live life and to leave a trail. So it takes a special person to want adventure with them. The future is so open to possibility. So they don't just they just don't want to settle. This um, isn't the person you want if you're after a mate to settle down with. But for another adventurer, like another Sag or a Gemini, this is perfect. Archers aren't concerned with details, which means they can thrive more detail-orientated signs like like Virgos. Um, they, they thrive with them because Virgos, are they pay attention to details and they can help them. And archers expect that everyone will want to have as much fun as they do, which tends to leave Scorpio and Taurus back in the dust. So with Scorpio and Taurus, it's like, eh, that's a lot of fun. Um, so it's something to keep in mind. Archers will do their best with other fire signs because um, romance can be both fiery and adventurous. Just don't forget that air feeds fire. So Gemini and Libra, Libra and Aquarius might have just the kind of surprises that archers love. Okay. And um, archers at work. This is like my favorite part. Um, When I was doing my little research, um, because archers tend to lose interest before a project is completed, it is best to have them on your idea team. Archers do well 
though in all areas of communication or anywhere a sense of humor and excitement are needed. And they have like this dry sense of humor and like sar- not s- sarcasm. Because sarcasm could be like Capricorn and Scorpio. Um, but they have like this different type of sense of humor. But it's effing funny. You don't even know that it's that it could come from them. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so they have a sense of humor. And so if there's somewhere that somewhere in the job that needs to be, you know, have a sense of humor and excitement, then you place them. Um, they may be clowns, they might be tricksters, or even court jesters. They also do well as national geographic photographers or kind of photographer. Um, archers also can be found in positions that require risk, um, like uh, bungee jumping. Uh, they like uh, uh, roller coasters or like the tallest one roller coaster not the regular one um they're like pilots they're like pilot they like they they are pilots they they take risks like that um they may be gamblers um because they rely a lot on their luck and they have a lot of optimism when it comes to that um archers are often found in um education medicine the legal system uh foreign relations the travel industry or travel for business um importer export Orders and sales. Archers tend to be highly educated, very well read. Sagittarius often produces philosophers, preachers, and anyone associated with inspiring others. I love this sign. Um, archers and their money. Overconfident archers tend to be overextend themselves, and by extension, that means their resources. For the sake of good time, um, they will do that. They will be like, um, they will put their last $100 on that 50 to one shot and it has a good chance of coming in. They'll do it. They'll bet, um, if they can hang in, uh, in the game for, for a while, they will try to hang in. Archers will go for the high stakes, whether or not their, their lifeline or, or their, you know, the last phone call depends on it. They don't mind doing that. They just, just, just go for it. Um, one of the best known archers at work was, um, uh, what was his name? I forgot. Uh, I want to say Roddenberry, Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek. Okay. He created Star Trek and, um, He's well known for um, for Star Trek. And he did things that no one else was doing at the time. This is 1960. He created a crew that included an African-American woman, a Russian, Asian, a, a Russian, an Asian, and an alien. Okay? He created Star Trek. That's how... Um, Sagittarius, how they work. Um, They're not too interested in the details. So you can forget about that. And and that becomes an issue for me. (laughs) But I'm learning how to deal with that. (laughs) My son is a Sag. And he just gets it done. But doesn't pay attention to the details. (laughs) And that's okay, because I'm cool with that. I'm working on it. <laughs> I love that guy. Um, yeah, so with Saj, just know that in partnerships, they need something new all the time. So that means that you have to probably think of date nights and exploration and adventure and meet a Sag halfway. So we're going to conclude with um, a little, little review of this. And 
the review is that the signs of the fall is Libra, Scorpio, and Sag, Sagittarius. And their cardinal signs, cardinal sign is Libra, and that they seek balance and harmony. And that the fixed sign is a Scorpio, and they desire transformation and power. And that a mutable sign, the mutable sign is Sag, Sagittarius, and they crave independence and adventure. Now, if you liked this podcast episode, please review and rate because you're fucking dope. I know you can. I know you will. And if you are a part of the LGBT community or the wise, the 45 year old or older community, please let me know how can I support and include you in our conversations. Email me at theartofhappyher at esctheNetwork.com or DM me at happyher.artistry. I've been told I am very responsive to my DMs. And please, 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 um, you can contribute to the sustainability of this podcast by um, looking into the podcast um bio and you can send via Venmo or Cash App or PayPal um, any contribution uh, because this way my sister podcast which is El Salon Network and um, Comadriando with Marcy we all um, can uh, thrive from whatever you send whatever you contribute. Thank you so much. And I see you next time.